Are we going extinct? Did you know we are currently experiencing an extinction event? There have been many mass extinction events throughout Earth's history, various species waxing and waning throughout time. According to scientists, however, we are currently in our own extinction event. Today we are going to be talking about the five largest mass extinction events throughout history and see just how our current extinction event might affect us. This will be a multi-part series with part 1 covering the Ordovician Sororlian extinction event and the late Devonian extinction event. The Ordovician Sororlian extinction event, or the late Ordovician mass extinction, was an extinction event that happened around 440 million years ago. It was the first of five major extinction events that happened in the past. The Ordovician period was the second of six periods found within the Paleozoic era and spanned 41.6 million years from the end of the Cambrian period to the start of the Sororlian period. Earth looked very different in this period of time. Ocean covered over half the world, and the continents, which consisted of four major ones at the time, were not yet in their present day positions, but instead split up and one being a supercontinent. The main continents consisted of Laurentia, which is found in present day North America, Siberia, Baltica, or present day Northern Europe, and Gondwana. Gondwana was the aforementioned supercontinent consisting of what is now present day South America, Africa, Arabia, Madagascar, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Another smaller continent, Avalonia, split off from the Ordovician and began to move north towards Baltica and Laurentia. This continent eventually became part of southwest Great Britain, southern Ireland, and the eastern coast of North America. The Ordovician had the highest sea levels of the Paleozoic. The beginning of the Ordovician period was very hot, with sea temperatures ranging from 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or 28 Celsius, in tropical regions, and 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 Celsius. Life flourished within this time period. While most of the creatures at this time had short food chains, they were still much more complex than those of the Cambrian period. The creatures were both strange and, in my opinion, amazing. Small organisms like phytoplankton and zooplankton floated around the ocean, carried by the currents. Various types of coral, including tabulata and rugosa, were starting to appear, as well as different species of mollusks like scaphopods. Larger species were also around at this time. Aglispedita, a primitive form of horseshoe crab, and Europtid, a sea scorpions, were just some of the few creatures that roamed the ocean. I would have to say that one of my personal favorites from my research, however, was the Orthoceros. They were considered to be one of the largest predators in the Ordovician. This species is still represented today by the living nautilus and allonautilus. This diverse and flourishing world is about to change, however. The temperature cold during the middle of the Ordovician period, changing to a more temperate climate. This cooling didn't stop there, however, and as the period went on, heading into the late Ordovician period, this cooling continued, eventually causing what is called the late Ordovician glaciation. These cooling temperatures caused sea levels to steadily fall, and thus, with cooling temperatures and the stable greenhouse conditions that allowed life to flourish. It is believed that there was a short ice age. With these now cold temperatures and the drop of atmospheric carbon dioxide that came before the late Ordovician glaciation, life just could simply not sustain itself. This extinction event is deemed to be the second largest in Earth's history, seeing 49-60% of marine genera and nearly 85% of marine species become extinct. Tropical life forms were hit particularly hard, and even those who were cold water species were hit hard during this event. Only those species that were able to adapt to the changing conditions survived and went on to fill the niches left empty by those species who had gone extinct. It is believed by some researchers that temperate climates did not return until the late Cerulean period. The late Devonian extinction primarily refers to a major extinction event called the Kalwasser event that occurred around 372 million years ago. This event led to a second, the Hangenberg event, which occurred around 359 million years ago that effectively brought an end to the Devonian period. The Devonian period was the fourth of six periods found within the Paleozoic era and spanned 60.3 million years from the end of the Cerulean period to the start of the Carboniferous period. Much like during the Ordovician period, Earth looked very different in this period of time from how we know it today. During this period, water still covered a large portion of the Earth, sea levels once again rising, and several land masses still existed. However, during this period, Laurentia and Baltica collided, creating the continent of Euro-America, or also called Russia. The Appalachian Mountains, which began to be formed in the Ordovician period, continued to rise, and the Caledonian Mountains, found in Great Britain and Scandinavia, were formed. The temperature during the start of the Devonian period was relatively warm, having recovered from the early Ordovician cooling and glaciers as it is believed that the Devonian lacked glaciers. It is believed that the period, at least the early part of the Devonian, had an average temperature of around 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. Despite the mass extinction in the Ordovician period, with most species having been wiped out or almost completely gone, life will find a way. While trilobites and great coral reefs were still common, the Devonian is dubbed by some as the age of fishes. Jawed fish begin to appear in placoderms, 
armored prehistoric fish begin to appear in almost every known aquatic environment. Prehistoric sharks even begin to become more numerous during this time and the first ammonites also begin to appear. So amazingly during this time, the environment made it so that the first fish began to gain well-developed lungs and the ability to be able to crawl out of the water and to stay on land for short periods of time. Later in this period, in the late Devonian period, tetrapods, the ancestors of all four-limbed vertebrates, including us humans, began adapting to walk on land, their pectoral and pelvic fins evolving over time to become legs. This is also a time of great plant growth, with many types of plants growing and spreading on land, and because no large herbivores were present during this time, it allowed the forest to grow massively and take over the land. Various arthropods, such as mites and scorpions, among others, found homes within the now stabilizing soil. Two main extinction events in this time period, as mentioned earlier, the Kelwasser event and the Hangenberg event, set the path for the ending of the Devonian. Much like the Ordovician, the Devonian was a time of great environmental changes. It is thought that the large growth of plants during this time caused a drop in the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide, which cooled the climate and perhaps led to the mass extinction event, though no one is 100% certain what exactly caused the late Devonian extinction. These extinction events primarily targeted the creatures that inhabited the shallow warm waters over those who resided in cold waters. Reef systems were greatly affected by this and also many other groups including trilobites and ammonites. It is estimated that 96% of vertebrates, psychonodonts, eel-like creatures, and bony fishes, and all the ostracoderms, armored jawless fish, and placoderms disappeared. It seemed that the plants that were on land in the early tetrapods were relatively unaffected, however, though there is another opinion that perhaps the tetrapods were almost wiped out as well. Well, that about wraps up the first part of this Mass Extinction series. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more, like and subscribe. If you have anything you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!